Thank you. So it's indeed a pleasure of our community nutrition family as we conduct our first ever national webinar on millet as we gearing up for the upcoming international year of millet 2023. And yes, this would be a scientific research evidence-based information sharing platform for all the dietitian all over the India. And yes, well, before we start, let me just brief what a community nutrition forum is and what we usually do here. So basically the community nutrition forum is an online community of qualified professionals in the field of nutrition and dietetics formed in Kerala started in the year of 2021. And CNF was started with a vision that is to impart the right knowledge and healthy eating habits and behavior for the community and also to create the awareness to the community about the importance of consulting the qualified professionals and also to create more opportunities and empower the fraternity. So yes, so let's we start and we have our dynamite and the eminent speakers ready with their presence and I know we all are eagerly waiting to sharpen our brains. So yes, so let we start with the novel function. So let me call upon the source, the energy of our community nutrition family, the person who always has a support system to that fraternity. Ms. Jodi James, founding member and dietitian at the Taluk Hospital, Peru, to enter the welcome speech. Ma'am, please. Thank you, Tanishma. Good evening. Thank you all to each and every one of you being here with us today. I'm very pleased to be able to welcome those of you that have been with us for a long time now, as well as those who are new to the group. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to our first national webinar on millets, the traditional wonder grain. CNF is a community of qualified prof professionals in the field of dietetics and nutrition. It teaches and it teaches and aims to contribute to the, to the betterment of the community of dietitians. Growth and humanity are the two pillars of this group. There are a series of sessions that you shall enjoy today. Our efforts will be to present every act with sheer honesty and respect. But before on begin, I would like to welcome our respected chief guest, Srimadhi Kalpana ma'am, on behalf of the entire members of CNF. Ma'am, you are cordially greeted by the CNF. You are highly motivating and inspiring, and I'm very sure that you will enlighten the young pillars of our community to become excellent in their ways. Secondly, I welcome Srimadhi Uma Kalyani, an eminent and active founding member of CNF for the session, Mighty Millets. Next, I would like to welcome the inevitable person of CNF, Srimadhi Sri Priya, who is a founding member, will be dealing with the, whether millets can be the solution for malnourishment. On behalf of the CNF, I would like to welcome you all and inform you that the seminar will completely enlighten you pertaining the pros and cons of millets. All the vital aspects regarding the topic will be conveyed to all. Hope you shall exit the space with zero doubts as our educators will ensure that they answer all your queries. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jyoti. Now let me welcome our Pulse, the backbone of our CNF team. She's been our mentor, also guide throughout the community nutrition all over the endeavors what we are doing here. Uh, Ms. Sharon Thomas, founding member and also the chief dietitian, Aster Mims Kourikot for the presidential address. Thank you so much, Tanishma, for the nice words. Good afternoon, all. I'm very happy to meet you all through this forum. And I thank all the speakers who accepted our invitation to address our dietitian community about the superfood millet. There are many others are joining in this webinar apart from the members of Community Nutrition Forum. So for their knowledge, as already uh, Tanishma was elaborating about little about CNF, I just summarize some activities of CNF. CNF was an initiative by a group of dietitians in 2021 October, which now has more than 250 members. The intention was to provide the correct nutrition education since there were a lot of misleading information on the internet regarding healthy eating habits. Within the span of one year, CNF could conduct many education sessions for the public through different uh, you know, activities like through different social media, etc. In the last uh, two years, we have given the right knowledge about nutrition 
to more than 200 schools across Kerala. In 2021, we had conducted 10 hour back to back webinar series as an awareness program for the general public. And I am proud to inform you that we all got, we got um, URF Asian records for the longest diabetes awareness session by the dietitians. Apart from that, our members are giving sessions on radio, TV, and other media regularly. Dietopedia is another session conducted for practicing dietitians every month online to enhance their knowledge in the field of nutrition. I am also happy to inform you that we could conduct a physical meet through our diet at ease program in association with World Diabetic Day for the general public in Calicut. Diabetes is, has been published in the International Diabetic Federation too. Through CNF, dietitians got a discount of 71% for the enrollment of FODMAP diet for the diabetic, dietetic management of IBS conducted by Monash University, Australia. These are some of the activities of just CNF for your information. Today also we have a very important subject millet, the traditional wonder grains. As the name suggests, millets are wonder grains. It is super food. They are rich in dietary fiber, vitamins, minerals, and gluten-free too. Yes, our speakers are here to elaborate the facts about millets. Millets are historically have been an important part of human diet. But since many years, millets are away from our diet, and it is replaced by rice and wheat. We have very uh, eminent speakers like Kalpana Madam is one of the best person to speak on this subject. She has done a lot of research on this field. We'll hear more about her later. Dr. Sri Priya Shaji is basically from Andhra Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh and she knows a lot about millets. Of, she has been exposed to different varieties of millet dishes from early childhood. Uma Kalyani, registered dietitian, has developed many innovative recipes using millets. In fact, I came to know about the variety of dishes that can be made using millets through her only. They are both founders of CNF2. Many millet-based value-added products are available in the market. I was thinking about like these, uh, we can even create young entrepreneurs in this field too. We know that millets bring lots of goodness and benefits to the patient as well as the common people. As a Keralite, I was only exposed to finger millet or ragi. Or, uh, we used to give ragi malt to infants as weaning food. And even uh, for our elderly people, like you know, when you when they are old, we used to give ragi porridge. But most of us are unaware of the health benefits of and even the cooking method of other millets, and even how to choose the right millet, we are not aware of. Nowadays, our, our patients are also getting lots of information about healthy food through internet. They, they, they used to come and ask a lot, a lot of doubts about these uh, food items also. To give right information, we, we need to get right information from the right people. As we all know, United Nations General Assembly has declared 2023 as International Year of Millets. So I wish all of you to benefit best of this webinar. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And it's so nice to know about all those in detail. So now let's time to sharpen our brains, dear all. So now let me welcome our vibrant and our active member, uh, Ms. Fida Jabbar, to introduce our speaker, Ms. Uh, Dr. Uma Kalyani. Uh, Fida, please. Yeah. Good evening, all. Uh, let me introduce our coming speaker. Mrs. Mrs. Uma Kalyani, ma'am. Uma Kalyani is a registered dietitian, yoga trainer, and a lifestyle mentor with over 22 years' experience in the, in the field. She is the founder and director of Uma's Nutri Yoga and managing partner of Yoga Plus Studio, Trivandrum. She encourages her clients in mindful eating, 
being fit with regular exercises supports emotional wellness and through med meditation and relaxation techniques stay positive and active she also she has also created an online community purple health challengers exclusively for women aiming at holistic wellness during the pandemic that has over 1700 members now she regularly writes health articles magazines like vanita healthy tv pradivaram also featured featured in leading newspapers the hindu malayala manorama and the times of india for her unique wellness programs her expertise is in wellness sessions for kids teenage girls and corporate relaxations and distressing uh, distressing sessions has taken many such sessions for it firms like infosys usd global and global usd global alliance technologies ibs hr H &R block and quest global welcoming you to the session ma'am thank you thank you yeah so i think uh, ma'am let's start our session yeah uh, i hope you will press in the screen right yeah thank you so a very good evening to one and all so let me thank each one of you for sparing your valuable time to join us for the session today and uh, before starting my topic uh, i sincerely thank our dear shri priya for uh, this you know uh, this community nutrition forum is her brainchild she started as community nutrition forum uh, calicut so meanwhile uh, like i was suggesting her if you can add uh, the name kerala we all can also join with you so immediately she accepted the request and along with uh, uh, sharin ma'am jyoti uh, sonia we all uh, together with the, another a bunch of uh, dynamic nutritionists all over the uh, kerala we started this initiative and with god's grace we are doing so many good things i'm really happy and proud about it and um, thank you so much uh, for the whole team for giving me an opportunity to share my knowledge i'm not an expert in millets but still uh, these days i'm trying to uh, incorporate millets in my uh, present uh, my day to day uh, diet as well as i'm incorporate uh, trying to encourage my clients or patients also to use the same so uh, let me share my screen to give you some basic inputs whatever i know hope my screen is visible yes yeah. so the mighty millets is a rhyming word as well as uh, the word mighty means it has even if it is a very small in size it has got so many uh, nutrition benefits uh, like uh, very tasty and the variety uh, is there in using the millet so Uh, Shri Priya, if anybody is unmuted in between, could you please mute there? Yeah. Screen is stuck here. I'm sorry for the delay. Uh, no issues, ma'am. If you want to share me the screens, please do share the screens. I'll do it. Let no me problem. try once more. Yeah, yeah, sure. Ah, uh, Shri Priya, can you please try sharing? I have sent it to you. Is it possible? Yeah, Uma, once again. Yeah. The slide is not moving. I don't know why. I you know, from, from uh, I'll give enable editing so that it will work. Just check that way. Many windows are open. Also, it might get delayed.
Uh, has it come now? Yeah, it has come. Oh, okay, we can able to uh, see the first share. Can you just uh, change to the next slide? Yeah, I'm changing it. It's not moving. No, no, it's not visible. Yeah. I'm sorry. so sorry about it. Sripriya, are you talking talking to us? No problem. Just give me two minutes. I'll share it. Yeah. yeah. I have the slides with me now. So do you want me to share it? Go ahead, Tanishma. Tanishma, you can share. Tanishma, can you make it full screen? We can see the first slide. Yeah, next one. <laughs> Can you able to see the next slides? Yes, yes, yes. Go, go back to go back to the second one. Yes, okay. Yeah, thank you so much, Danishma. Yeah. So, what are millets? Most of us know what is millet, like, uh, and most of us are more familiar with the ragi or the finger millet. So, millets are the oldest foods. Yeah, oldest foods known to humanity. The traditional grains grown, consumed in Indian subcontinent from the past more than 5,000 years. So it is a very old gra grain and ancient grain, but still like many of us are now only coming to know about different varieties of millets. They are small cereal grains from the grass family. And many are getting confused with is barley a millet, uh, is quinoa a millet. So, so many doubts are, especially among the health conscious people, they are asking. So, next slide, please. So, my next slide will take you through what is the difference between cereals and millets. So, cereals, as we know, they are most important source of food for our, uh, for our human uh, beings. They are, the, they are also the members of grass family. They are high in carbohydrates, nearly 60 to 70 percentage of the uh, cereals are, uh, uh, I mean, carbohydrate. They are providing carbohydrates, and uh, most commonly we are using rice, wheat. Then the third one is oats, rye, maize, and barley are the other commonly uh, used mill, uh, cereals. And coming to the millets, uh, cereals. They are also small grains, small cereals produced uh, by the, I mean, the grass family, and they are low in GI. Glycemic index is compared comparatively low uh, like we are commonly using rice and wheat so compared to rice and wheat the glycemic index of uh, millets are low that's the reason we are saying it is good for weight reduction people as well as for the diabetic people and there are nearly 14 to 15 types of different millets though everything is not available everywhere but still like uh, many uh, places we are getting uh, more popular popularity among these millets and uh, hope, hopefully in the coming years we'll be getting more varieties throughout Kerala and examples are ragi, bajra, jowar, little millet etc. So energy provided by rice, wheat and millets are almost the same because many people are thinking like millets are healthy we can have more of that it's not like that if you compare the uh, calories provided or the energy provided by both rice, wheat and millet is almost the same, but the protein content, fiber content, minerals, and anti antioxidants in millets are much higher than our other grains. Let it be rice, wheat, or any other grains. Next one, please. Uh, Tanishma, there is a, a red mark. Can you erase it? Is it from your screen? Oh, no, it's not from my skin. Uh, it's not from my... Okay, okay, fine. Yeah, go back, go back. Go back to the third one. Yeah. 
So the qualities of millets, millets are nutritious with the goodness of macro uh, nutrients, micronutrients and antioxidants. They are easy to cultivate. It can withstand extreme weather conditions, need low to moderate rainfall. Even in the very uh, dry climate, I mean, uh, climate like in uh, Tamil Nadu and Andhra, we can grow uh, these millets uh, very easily compared to rice and wheat. And uh, they are very, very resistant to different uh, pests also. So the usage of pesticide is very less uh, while cultivating millets compared to rice and wheat. And high temperature tolerance, it can be grown in har harshest environments also. For example, in Andhra Pradesh and all, in peak summer, the temperature rises very high. The land becomes very dry. Even then, we can grow millets easily. And with, with, uh, with, where there is limited scope for growing others, other grains, millets are easy to grow. Variety of millets are available in India that brings diversity in the diet. Because if you see rice, we may be having white rice and brown rice and red rice or maybe few more varieties. But when you compare, but most of the rice, you know, even if the varieties are different, the taste will be more or less the same thing. But when you see millet, when the different types of millets we are using, the taste is entirely different. So it is like you can innovate different, different recipes with the variety of millets that brings diversity in the diet. That is definitely good for our gut health. Next one, please. So in India, uh, the major research uh, on millet is taking place in Indian Institute of Millet Research, Hyderabad. From this uh, website only, I've taken most of the information. So if anybody is uh, you know, planning to do any research or any information or any presentations, you can kindly visit their website, IIMR Hyderabad. Next one. So millets are also called nutri cereals. I think our Kalpana ma'am's topic is nutri cereals. Nutri cereals is nothing but another name we have given for the millets. The reason is they provide most of the nutrients needed for our body. So as you know, like when you are comparing other cereals that might be lacking in uh, some amino acids or some uh, other nutrients, but if you see even the uh, like uh, mineral content, iron and calcium might not be that high in other grains. But if you see millets, it has almost all the nutrients needed for our human body. Let it be antioxidants or minerals or protein, fiber, whatever it is, all the nutrients are, um, the because of the richness of the nutrients, it is called nutri cereals. Next one, please. So another category uh, category of uh, categorization of millet is major millets, minor millets, and pseudo millets. So together they are called nutrient cereals. So all these three, I'll be uh, explaining in the coming slides what what are the major millets, minor millets, and pseudo millets. All three millets are together. This group is called nutrient cereals. Next one, please. So nutri cereals, uh, ragi, jowar, and bajra. These three are the main millets uh, that is being cultivated in India. And we use, compared to other millets, these three millets are majorly used in India. They are called major millets. And the small millets, like all other millets, come under minor millets, like little millet, foxtail millet, cordo, barnyard, prosom millets. All other millets comes under minor millets. So the three ones, ragi, jowar, and bajra, uh, comes under major millets. And pseudo millet, we are not very familiar with the name. Pseudo millet, uh, two millets are called pseudo millet, amaranth seeds and buckwheat. Amaranth seed is like nothing but our uh, green, uh, green chira, we call it as, no? The same family, but not exactly the same uh, amaranth. The same family, the seeds are taken from it and the picture is showing buckwheat. And buckwheat is also, uh, it is a family of uh, wheat, Wheat family, but uh, it doesn't have gluten content. Though the name says wheat, but it doesn't have gluten. So the similarity of all these uh, nutri cereals is all of them are gluten free, and uh, most of the nutrient content is almost the same. That's the reason they are categorized under uh, the millets. Even the pseudo millets, though the botanical family is different than the other millets, but the nutrition wise, it is almost the same. That is why it is called a pseudo millets. Next one, please. So pseudo millets, buckwheat and amaranth seeds. The picture shows the first one is a buckwheat. Excuse me, Uma. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, excuse me, uh, members. So there is someone just drawing on the screen. Please stop it. I think it's Miss Surya. Can you please stop it? Maybe kids. <laughs> yeah, kids must be. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, please continue. Yeah, sure. 
yeah the first picture is uh, buck amaran seeds and the second one uh, sorry first one is a buckwheat and the second picture shows the amaran seeds they both are called pseudo millets and they are not uh, the same, same botanical family as of the true millets but nutritionally similarly and they are used almost the cooking is also almost same like the other millets that's why they are called the pseudo millets and they are also the pseudo millets are also gluten free they are high high in protein in fact they are little more higher high in protein compared to the minor and major millets and it has the amino acid lysine as you know usually cereals are uh, low in lysine the amino acid lysine but the pseudo millets are high in uh, the amino acid i mean they has a lysine present in it and the protein percentage is uh, higher than the other cereal grains and they are high in fiber potassium iron and phosphorus and phytosterols that is antioxidants that helps to uh, reduce the black bad cholesterol in our blood next one please and the, uh, the it is nothing but the another name of the major and minor millet naked grains and the husk grains the first first picture is jowar and the second picture is uh, bajra jowar is called manicholam in malayalam and bajra is our pearl millet and uh, major millets are also called naked grains that doesn't have a hard or undigestible husk they don't need processing they just need to be cleaned and used so immediately after harvesting we can just clean it and use it for any of the cooking any of the recipes and the minor millets are also called husk grains they are hard they have the hard indig undigestible seed coat they are having more uh, bran compared to the other grain so that is the difference between the major millets and the minor millet that's the name they have given naked means it doesn't have the hard and outer outer covering or the undigestible outer covering the other one has the um, covering that's the reason it is called uh, the husk the grains next one please the nutritional qualities of millets as we all know like uh, millets are nutritionally very rich they are the first thing is gluten free because these days many are having gluten allergy let it be ibs or any other uh, no abdominal uh, issues gastroenteritic issues but um, they are finding hard to digest gluten so these are gluten free uh, in nature and the glycemic index is lower than commonly used grain rice and wheat as i told you before because of that reason it gives more no it gives the satiety value that thus can be included for the diabetic patients as well as for the weight loss clients and protein content is high as i told you before and the digestibility of the protein is also high and the uh, antioxidant content they are rich in antioxidants phytates polyphenols tannins anthocyanins and uh, like phytosterols phyto polyphenols and phy phytosterols that helps in anti aging prevention of metabolic diseases even and they have anti cancer properties next one please and nutritional qualities of let's continue fermented millets increases the probiotic properties as you know like we can uh, like uh, sprout it and uh, do the fermentation like by making appam or we can add yogurt and do some uh, fermented preparations that increases the probiotic uh, properties and when you are cooking also when you are making the appam batter and all because the fiber content uh, the fermentation is very easy and you get very crispy appam when you are making with millets compared to the rice appam the crispiness will be very high and the fermentation becomes Uh, easy because of the fiber content in it and uh, because of the probiotic property it is, it is good for gut health and overall uh, immunity it is good even for uh, like uh, this, uh, ibs people or people having any other gastric issues like ibd and all can tolerate uh, the millets better especially the pearl millet is easily tolerated by people having any gastric issues we usually think that it has five uh, more fiber content so it might be difficult for digesting for the people with ibs and all but uh, many researches have shown that even people with gastric uh, uh, like issues can digest it easily then millets have the richness of vitamins especially folic acid carotene and thiamine and they are also rich in calcium we all know ragi is a, a good source of calcium so similarly many other i'll be coming i mean explaining in the coming slides about the different uh, unique properties or nutritional qualities of each millet and generally they are high in mil, uh, minerals like calcium iron and zinc next one please next one tanishma I have shared. I have changed. 
it hasn't moved here. Can others see the next slide? Or are you there? Yes, it is coming. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So uh, as I told you, pearl millage has got hypoallergic properties. Then the high fiber, uh, fiber content that is the water absorbing and bulking properties, it increases the transit time in the food, in the, of food in the gut that reduces the risk of IBD and helps, uh, helps in reducing the blood cholesterol levels. And it has also got anti-acidic properties. That's good for people having bloating or cramping, constipation or discomforts, any gastric discomforts. Uh, it is a soothing food. Next one, please. Next one, Padishma. Yeah, it's changed, changed. Yeah, maybe it is taking some time. Time. One second. Yeah. Yeah. Types of millets. Yeah, thank you, Danishma. So coming to the types of millets, uh, there are so many varieties of millets, but still I have listed out the commonly used one. The first one is the pearl millet. Another name of pearl millet, pearl millet is bajra or kamba. In Malayalam, we call it as kamba. And the second one is a finger millet or ragi or kuvaraga. I think in Calicut, you call it as muttari. And the third one is foxtail millet or thina that is commonly used, um, especially for uh, feeding the birds and all we will be using. And that is actually many people ask, can we use thina, which is given for the uh, feeding the birds? But actually that is low quality one, thina, we use it for the birds and other pets. But uh, the one which is uh, the, the same thing only, maybe the third quality goes for the birds and the good quality we may have to use. Otherwise, it will have a lot of dust and uh, out. Yeah, I have muted them. Okay, then the fourth variety is the barnyard millet or sanva or kadava uh, pulla or kudravali in Tamil. Uh, these are different names I'm just mentioning because I don't know which name in your locality you'll be using. And the next one is little millet or chama uh, rice. In Malayalam also we call it uh, chama idi. Then the next one is kodam millet or varaga. So the picture also I have shown foxtail millet, barnyard millet, little millet and kodam millet. And actually these four millets looks almost the same. Only when you use it um, no, regularly, you will find very little difference between uh, these millets. But ragi, as you know, it, is, it has a distinct color, brown color. It can be easily identified. Even pearl millet. You can go to the next slide, Tanishma. Yeah, so in this, I have shown proso millet, brown top millet, teff and sorghum. Sorghum is manicholam, like the major millet. So next one, uh, in the list, proso millet or pani varaga, we call it as pani varaga, then brown top millet. Selvia, Tef, and Fonio. These three actually are not yet used. The ninth one, Tef and Fonio. I have seen the variety of the picture in the uh, website, but I have not seen it uh, or used it yet. Then the last one is Mani Cholam or Sorghum. Uh, here also many get confused about whether the Cholam and this is same. Cholam or uh, the um, uh, corn we use, that is different. That is not a millet. This is Mani Cholam, which is a millet. It looks similar to the other millets. Next one, please. So unique qualities of each millet. I'll just brush you uh, through all these. Uh, for each millet, I'll just uh, let you know the main unique properties. The pearl millet, if you see, it is high in protein, 12 to 16 percentage, twice protein than present in the milk. They are high in fiber, iron, niacin is higher than all other cereals. It reduces, uh, reduces the risk of IBD. It is gut friendly, especially when it is malted. As you all know, when you sprout or ferment or malt, the digestibility increases. So pearl millet is compared to, compared to all other millets is best for uh, people having any gastric issues. Then the second one and the taste of the pearl millet. I like the taste of pearl millet very much. Like when you roast or malt or ferment, it gives a nice aroma. 
that trans uh, no that we can see in the recipes which you make with all these millets so fermented is one of the my favorites in taste wise i'm telling see then the next one is finger millet or our ragi they are rich in calcium as we all know when we are you know, in our college days and you know, on when we plan pregnancy diet and you know, on we definitely add uh, uh, finger millet or ragi to increase the meet the calcium requirements of the teenagers and all uh, like when we are planning ragi is most commonly used one so compared to all other millets it has the highest calcium content it has thrice calcium than in the milk excellent malting malting properties it has and it is good for weaning food the same reason only it is easy to digest that's the reason it is given for small babies as we weaning food as well as for elderly we give it as porridge and all because it is easy to digest and it also has antioxidant uh, in good amounts then the next one foxtail millet it is a non allergic grain high in carbohydrate double protein than present in the rice and it has calcium and um, iron almost all millets are rich in calcium and iron but uh, exceptionally rich in uh, like ragi calcium is ex exceptionally rich in ragi uh, the same way high uh, the pearl millet is high in protein next one so banyan millet it has functional constituents gaba gamma amino butyric acid and beta glucan which are antioxidants that can boost our immunity richest source of fiber 13.6 percent fiber is present in it and it is very high in iron and the next one is little millet the smallest of all the millets that's why the name little millet it is rich in fiber 7.6 percent and the niacin helps to lower the cholesterol and it has high iron content and antioxidants little millet is high in magnesium that is why it is good for heart health and for hypertensive people and the next one is cordon millet it has thrice fiber than wheat or maize it has 10 times more fiber than rice 11 percentage protein is present in it high in fiber less than present in in it strengthens the nervous system next one so proso millet high in protein 12 12.5 percent uh, present in it and it is it has good amount of niacin in it then brown top millet it eases the gut detoxifies the body and relieves constipation because of the fiber content and it is recommended for gastric ulcers and colon cancer patients then sorghum it is also known as great millet or indian millet because that is uh, no next to ragi i think sorghum is used in major part of the uh, india especially the north side we use more of sorghum and it is a nutrient packed grain with the richness of b vitamins magnesium potassium iron zinc and antioxidants and the picture in this is showing the bisibale bath you know like uh, in karnataka famous recipe with dal and uh, rice we make sambar rice kind of thing so it is a bisibale bath made of uh, millets next one please so how to introduce millets in your diet i know most of you have already started using it and this is a picture of uh, uh, like yeah i prepared uh, last to last year uh, without using rice only with millets i prepared the main rice and the round thing is the mudde or the ragi mudde we commonly see in uh, andhra pradesh and karnataka so it is made of uh, ragi and the next to that is another millet i don't exactly remember what millet it was it is just a uh, little millet or something i think just cooked and uh, used uh, instead of rice and uh, paisam also i think i made two paisams uh, using millet one with the jaggery and one with milk so if you are planning to use millet definitely as dietitians you, when we are recommending we have to use it first and no to know how it tastes and uh, uh, like uh, how to cook it and all definitely we have to start using it first and i'm very happy that uh, already our uh, group is uh, flooding with millet remy ami recipes and in fact today morning also sonia had sent one batayam recipe hope uh, most of you must have seen and she was telling she like she is also trying that batayam with millet for the first time and it was tasting better than the other rice whatever the millet uh, whatever was tasting better than the rice she was saying so how to introduce it in your diet or um, when you are recommending for the patients so start with little millet or the barnyard millet which has almost similar taste to rice so you can start with that as their color is also almost the same because when you are using ragi when you make appam the color is not white it will be brown in color so especially if you have small kids and all they may not accept it in the beginning so when you are uh, you starting to use it 
use the millets which are almost similar to the um, rice color so that it is easy uh, no they won't uh, um, no distinguish between the two and they may start eating and slowly they will like the taste and while making dosa idli you can use 50% of the rice and half if you are using two cups one cup rice and one cup millet you can use so that the color may not or the taste may not change drastically so slowly you can introduce like that then uh, increase the percentage of millet and you can reduce the uh, rice quantity then add pulses vegetables along along with the meals so that the meal tastes better and nutritious and usually if you see you know, this uh, millet dosa and all maybe may slightly dry than the rice uh, dosa or whatever usually dosa we make so what you have you can do is usually my um, you know clients say they make a very uh, delicious or uh, kadala curry or sambar so that when you dip and eat you may not you know distinguishly uh, feel any difference in the taste so than simply having some podi or something you may make a good curry which has protein as well as vegetables so that it tastes better and becomes more nutritious and in my personal experience uh, introduced millet in the same way maybe 2 3 years back before that i have used um, ragi but not all other millets so in the beginning i have two teenage boys they were all like you know like they are not very open to new tastes and all they were little hesitant to use but uh, slowly like i introduced the same way like adding uh, the same color one then the combination of rice or wheat so so that they started getting that taste and these days you know when i make appam they like ragi appam more than the rice appam because they are it is more crispier and uh, uh, like if you like the crispy taste you will definitely Uh, like the ragi appam so you can uh, try the appam or dosa recipe with all these millets all these millets can be used in all other recipes whatever day to day life we are making like appam or putt or rice upama milkshake soup uh, like alwa ladu everything you can make using all these millets so i have also encouraged many of my clients to add millets to their diet they have started innovating new recipes and everybody was telling the same thing i can eat because it is healthy but i don't know whether my family will accept but slowly almost 80 to 90% of the family have you know positively accepted and they all have started using millets i'm happy and uh, proud to say that and we are also making a list of millet healthy recipes with 100 healthy millet recipes we are planning to publish one book also soon next one please so basic millet cooking i think uh, last few more slides are there so choose unprocessed millets because some are saying it is completely polished because they are usually millets are rich in fiber but these days we are getting uh, in the shop only the polished one like that so try to go for the unprocessed millets uh, better not to go for the powdered one because when it is powdered we don't know whether it is you no know, whole one or the processed one or the cleaned one so if you can buy and powder it yourself that is the best way uh, i would suggest and the picture is uh, pearl millet sprouts i should thank sri priya for uh, giving me the tips to how to make the sprout so this is a finger i mean pearl millet sprouts and after that i made powdered it and made putta with that it was very aromatic and tasty so clean it well and soak the millets because most of the millets if it is not of good quality it might have lot of dust and you know um, dust particles and all so clean it well and before cooking it is better Uh, to soak all the millets for four to six hours. If you see rice, we don't usually soak to make you no know, cooked rice. Chow rice, curry, and we don't uh, soak it, no. But for millets, even if you are planning to use it as millet rice, better to soak it for minimum four to six hours. Then you cook it. Then you can either use it as rice, or you can make some upma or fried rice or biryani out of it. But uh, preferably to be soaked. uh then millet and water ratio for cooking how much water to add that is also commonly asked doubt by most of the people so one is to two is the ratio if you are taking one cup of a millet you can put two cups of uh, water same like we cook rice now same like that you can add for eating uh, rice like just to eat it as rice you can cook it uh, cook it in the pressure cooker but when you are making making payasam or curd rice or kichdi which is little more uh, softer uh, preparations you can add 1 is to 3 ratio and maybe if you are some people say you should not pressure cook it but i usually pressure cook it only because uh, otherwise cooking takes a lot of time uh, if you are putting in the pressure cooker maybe one or two whistles again it depends if you are making upma you don't have to cook it very 
know, a very snatchy thing. So you just keep it for one whistle. If it for rice, maybe two whistles. And if it is for kichdi or little, you know, paisam and all, maybe three whistles you can keep. So when you are trying out, no, you can just try different things and whatever consistency you are liking, you can fix that one. Then the different uh, methods to enhance the nutrition quality of millets. Sprouting, same like green gram sprouts, we do not just soak it and uh, cover it in a muslin cloth within 12 hours. Uh, this pearl millet takes more time, maybe 24 hours for sprouting. So again, you can try different size of millets and the different uh, uh, climate. It may take a longer or shorter durations. So sprouting is one, where, one uh, method, then malting, then dry roasting. All the millets, you, know, you just have to dry roast it till nice aroma comes, then you powder it and you can make any laddu or paisam, any kind of or porridge you can make with all these millets with dry roasting. Because dry roasting itself, uh, half of the cooking will be done. So that is also uh, one of the methods. And fermenting, milling, definitely after powdering, you can make appam or putta and all. It not only to improve the, improving the taste, it improves the digestibility and bioavailability of uh, the millets because it has some anti-nutritional factors, phytates and tannins. So when you do these processing or the uh, all these methods, you can improve the digestibility of millets, the nutrients. Yes, please. Next one. Next one, Tanishma. Yeah, one second. Sorry. Yeah. These are some of the millet uh, recipes that I have tried or my uh, students have tried. The first one is ledu, second one is visible bath. The third one is a balanced meal with uh, millet rice and uh, green gram curry and vegetables. Then the next one is uh, pongal or kichdi, sweet pongal and uh, a kichdi made of uh, millet. And uh, the three bowls are uh, different paisams made of millet, then dosa and sambar, then pumpkin and millet paisam. I think some pictures I have already shared in our group, then appam and kadalakari. So these, these are a uh, few pictures of the millet recipes. Next one, please. So concluding, with why we celebrate International Year of Millets in 2023 to showcase Indian millets to global platform to ensure nutritional security using millets as food and to end malnutrition as dietitian let us empower our knowledge to help our community with this global vision. Thank you so much for your patient listening. I think I took extra time because of the glitches also. I'm so sorry about it. So thank you so much uh, once again for you all for uh, listening to me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Uma ma'am. It was really indeed a pleasure to see like the different varieties of millet and the way you have presented with this. Thank you so much. Uh, so next, uh, let me call a vibrant and active member, Minu Maria George, uh, the uh, Dietitian Baby Memorial Hospital to intro our next speaker. Oh, Maria, can she can someone message you? Uh, Danica, I think she's having some problem in hearing. Uh, you just give a few words, and we can continue. One second, uh, let me just uh, Jody can do that. Yeah, I think Jyoti Mem is the right person. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, let me just download your uh, presentation. Now.
ഒരു ഒരു മിനിറ്റ് ഞാൻ ഇതൊന്ന് എടുത്തോട്ടെ കേട്ടോ Actually, there is no introduction needed for Sri Priya. She is a founding member of CNF and uh, she is also a very vibrant uh, personality. Uh, all the ideas are coming from Sri only, what we are doing right now. And uh, I should appreciate her uh, on this time. And uh, she is a, a psychological PhD holder. And, uh, but still, uh, she had done her nutrition uh, in her BSc level itself. And uh, she is a very... the dietitian also so i would like to invite uh, sri for this uh, occasion uh, she will be uh, contributing a few uh, sentences regarding how this millet can be uh, how or whether it can pollution for the malnutrition in india so i would like to invite sri for uh, the session thank you thank you so much jyoti ma'am uh, and i would like to welcome sri ma'am to do the uh, presentations Hi all, very warm good evening. And uh, I just shared my screen. Can you all view this? Yes. Okay. One second. So, hope you all had your coffee. So, let's go into the content because it's already late. Uh, my topic for the day is diet enriched with millet. can it be the answer for malnutrition in india free india so what is your thoughts just keep pondering yourself and uh, before going into the session i like to say introduce few words about myself basically i am a nutritionist and then my pg and phd is in clinical psychology i am also an art therapist and uh, i am a firm believer of traditional things and uh, being born and brought up in agriculture family millets is nothing new for me it is all a old thing <laughs> so anyway uh, i would like to talk about the like old wine and the new pot because is since it is a international millet year everywhere there is a fancy word about millet 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 so what is millet and before that let's just have a few note on malnutrition so as we all are aware that malnutrition is uh, like under nutrition stunting wasting and micronutrient deficiencies over nutrition so all three together is called as malnutrition and india is like leading in the world in child malnutrition that doesn't means that our adult or well nourished even ad- adults and geriatrics are malnourished and our women are severely malnourished so in the area of children we are leading on the top as of the report by unicef and you uni, uh, like recent national family health survey 5 that is on 2021 their key finding is 36% children under age of 5 was stunted 19% are wasted nutrients are wasted they are thin for their height 32% are underweight 3% are overweight and children born to the mothers with no schooling that is the poor literacy is also showing its lowest wealth quintile it is they are also undernourished so in contradictory as we see malnutrition is only lean or uh, stunted and all those things malnutrition is the key contributor to obesity in india you all of us are aware of thin fat indian so as per again unicef at last india is predicted to have more than 27 million obese children representing 1 in 10 children will be globally obese by 2030 and we ranks 99th in the list of 193 countries that is 50 percentage and the economic impact is going to be very badly affecting us this malnutrition is going to take our healthcare cost in a very adverse stages so what is the bigger problem for malnutrition mainly we indians have that tendency of getting fatter especially in the middle circumference our visceral obesity is high because of our climatic conditions and we people are undernourished and overnourished you might have all noticed that our girls are very undernourished before marriage they are all slim like simran and overnourished or very fat after one delivery so this thin fat indian is a 
genetical map which is happening in our special indian subcontinent gene type so this is another thing we have to look in and we have to work on overweight and obesity are results of over nutrition but overweight and obesity doesn't mean that the person is getting a right kind of nutrient most obese people are micronutrient deficient so that is the very important thing we have to note so what are the approaches to combat the small nutrition food security nutritional security health security and economic security these are the very important securities we need to combat malnutrition but we have another biggest problem what is it nutritional illiteracy so when we talk about nutritional illiteracy we cannot skip this panchatantra story of the greedy mouse a mouse when it sees a whole bucket of maize or grains it just runs deeper 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 and it got more fat it couldn't come out of the smallest hole where it enters this is what happening with our parents in today's age is not only today's even since 70s 80s our parents are totally illiterate about the right kind of nutrition and whatever comes on tv or whoever neighbor says something somebody says something this is very good for your child they just push push over feed until that the child totally stops or the child get obese but they are not giving the diversity it is like one thing oh this is good just keep pushing with that one the diversity is not given and the information given to them will be like very simple banana is good so i can give banana chips potato or good i can give a prams this kind of when something is good it is not all good with every way of preparation that is what our people lack knowledge about when we say ragi is good we are now seeing all ragi munches on tv advertisement and our people will be rushing behind that so this is the very important illiteracy we have to educate our people about so now we have to enter into the millet and discuss on the scientific areas why it is good for malnutrition free india so as i said early ragi is not a new age food it is the first crop and it has been used over years and ages if you see that uh, our vedic scriptures there is lot about this grains for example the tina is used for uh, lord muruga they call, they even give today there is a naivedya of tina and for ganesha there is a different thing for shiva chama and for vishnu it is muttari ragi so these kind of things are very much used in our vedic scriptures and india has been long grown millets and very important our south india especially first leading uh, millet agricultural store karnataka then comes andhra pradesh now the rice bowl of india is not first in uh, millet cropping it is second and uh, third is tamil nadu then punjab and chatishkar is also the basic agriculturist for ragi so only with this much of agriculture how are we going to like very less sunflower we are cultivating we are making low huge amount of sunflower oil so what is it going to happen how it is going to affect our scenario but before that uh, entering into the political questions we can see some scientific questions too so about the nutrients in millets i'm not going so deep in micro and macronutrients because uh, our next speaker madam kalpana is going to speak on that so i'm just touching this part because i have another thing to give most important concept so when it comes to nutrients uh, when it comes uh, it is 5% less caloric than any other normal grains and 15% of less carbohydrate but it is of complex carbohydrate so this complex hydrate will give us a sustained release and thus it makes it a good carbohydrate it is not a immediate release it is a sustained release so whatever uh, carbohydrate we get from this is even very good for every organ of our body and brain consumes a very important complex carbohydrate supports in the mental well being and uh, when it comes to other nutrients 
it is 36 percentage more protein when compared to other grains 96 percentage of fiber 42 percentage of phosphorus 88 percentage of calcium 76 percentage of iron calcium and iron are very important deficiency we are having in our children and when it comes to phosphorus and sodium that is what the very biggest problem to our geriatric clients so what are the health benefits already uma had said uh, several times just reinforce it is a gluten free and it is rich in dietary fiber rich in micronutrients especially all the minerals calcium iron and uh, phosphorus selenium magnesium magnesium is very important to note that most of the millets have good amount of magnesium and it is low in glycemic index except finger millet but still studies have two different versions that the glycemic index is high but the glycemic is low is not so high but it is still on studies and water absorbing and bulking property is quite high in ragi because of its uh, gluten free nature and high fiber so, so it reduces the it controls the hunger and uh, our metabolism is eased by this way it reduces our in irritable bowel syndrome it also acts as a detoxifying agent and uh, most of the clients when they come after the fat diet or so come after some uh, post surgical or post steroid treatment i would suggest them to take maximum of millet so that it will be helping for the detoxification and the fermentation process in the millets that gives a wonderful probiotic feeding formula so it helps in the inner ecosystem too and very important the phenolic compounds like antioxidant anti mutagenic anti osteogenic anti inflammatory anti viral and platelet aggregation these makes the millets very very mightier than other grains the total antioxidant capacity is higher due to their high total carotenoid and tocopyrrol content which varies from 78 to 366 in different millet varieties and another important thing micronutrients we have to say the millets have a very good amount of niacin this is very important when we talk about the iron or any other b complex micronutrient deficiency niacin is very important and the ragi oh sorry any millet as a functional food that is very important as a functional food they are very rich source of fiber antioxidant complex carbohydrate this way what happens is it just gives a very biggest beneficial effects in reducing the cvd cancer or even other communicable non communicable diseases ncds okay diabetes or any other non communicable diseases and in few vitro and animal studies it has been studied that it supported the function as a functional food in controlling the uh, anti aging or uh, degenerative diseases millets have potential for protection against age onset degenerative diseases especially we in psychological uh, conditions like uh, parkinsonism and other uh, even for uh, children with the multiple conditions aspergers or adhd we recommend millets for their mightiness and controlling the uh, vibrant cognitive states this is the main area i want to indulge in that is bioavailability of nutrients as i said earlier when it is said to be a very good food what we forget is give it in any form that is good that is not the way when it comes to nutrient that's why what we study on food service the cooking methods are very important so like the cooking methods how the bioavailability is increased is what we have to understand when we dietitians recommend it scientifically so the millets the hard and even naked grains contain adverse anti nutrient properties too so though the high fiber content is present some anti nutritional properties like phytates tannins affect the bioavailability of the minerals some studies says the absorption of iron tends to be lower from the millets from rice or wheat like even from rice you can bread rice you can observe more iron than the millets how can it be solved 
because millets are rich source of iron. How can we solve this? So before going into that, I can say that not only pilot or the anti nutrient, there are supponents which affects the absorption of vitamin A and E. Phenolic compens, as I said initially, reduces the amino acid absorption and bioavailability. Enzyme inhibitors reduces the protein digestibility and lectins and hemoglutins. These reduces the entire nutrient absorption. So what, how can we make this mightier for our absorption? Uh, like when you feed the birds, the bird can remove the husk by itself, but not the human body. So how can we reduce is simple by fermentation, milling and soaking, germination, and to exo exogenous enzyme formation. This exogenous enzyme formation we are not doing in a home-based cooking, but it is happening in the industrial-based polishing and kind of things. So when I go into the processing techniques, anti-nutrient reduction strategies is the processing technique. The age-old formula, I always wonder who the person might have, uh, like whenever uh, we make, uh, we are very common users of uh, finger millet, ragi, when it is fermented, it gives a wonderful flavor for me. I, I just love that flavor and uh, I just uh, go and see how much it is fermented. So we don't know who has found this fermentation and all, but with this fermentation technique, especially milling the thicker grains, husk decortication or seed separation, seed gradation, these are mostly done in the forming level itself. Like they will just break it in like a simulina or there we can also see the popping conditions, malting and other heat and cold extrusions also is done in industrial areas. So what we do in home fermentation, fermentation enhances the biological value, net protein utilizations by the body and the contents of tiamine, riboflavin and niacin is increased and absorbed by the body. Fermentation showed a significant reduction in phytates in several studies by 20% of tannins, 52% of trypsins is reduced, and 32% at the end of 24 hours, resulting in increase of percent mineral availability. That is calcium and phosphorus ion zinc will be well absorbed after 24 to maximum 24 hours of fermentation. We recommend 24 to 72 hours of fermentation. After 72 hours of fermentation, this becomes a real wine. So for the longer periods of time, it means the phytic acid will be reduced up to 64.8 percentage and uh, in sorghum grains, even sorghum grains, some say that it is also a kind of millets, but uh, sorghum is, we say sorghum and uh, millets, both are separate. So in other millets, uh, that 64 percentage, as I mentioned earlier, is in uh, sorghum grains. When it comes to other millets, it is 72.3 and 54.3 of phytate after 96 and 72 hours, respectively. So milling, fermentation, and germination are the three processes which improves the, uh, sorry, reduces the anti-nutrient properties. The studies has continuously reported the phytate content will be reduced to 49.2 in milling. 66.5 in germination and 33 percentage in fermentation. So milling is mostly for the heavy huskful grains. So where the seed coat will be removed and decortication has taken place. So this uh, heavy and thick is also called as positive millets. This will be removed with the seed decortication. If it is not, the seeds are not re removed properly, it will not be like able, the kids and all will not be able to digest or even it will not be palatable for us and we cannot even cook it properly. And uh, this brand is also a very good source of dietary fiber and edible oil. The D oil brand from Millets has the advantage of having lesser silica than rice bran oils. We use this uh, even in Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu, I'm not sure very much, uh, but in Andhra Pradesh, they generally use this D oil brand from Millets. So what about this heat and cold extrusion, mostly popping, flaking, that we call this puri and kind of things, no? Expanded grinds, like murmura kind, for boiling for the better shelf life. This uh, helps in deactivating the lipase substance, anti-nutrient lipase. They also have a better aroma and texture. 
and can be converted into a variety of products which can be used as snacks and made into a complementary food for like uh, uh, our ello urunda ello tatta kind of things uh, even what you other one is called groundnut chickies no like this uh, even our millets can be into made into wonderful chickies or other kind of uh, snacks for the children especially it can be used for a complementary feeding even we make a uh, different type of kanjis and even paisams with this and germination and malting as i said it is a wonderful process the sprout sprouting process every millet should be sprouted up to uh, 24 up to 72 hours more not more than 72 hours if it is getting not sprouting more than 72 hours that is not a fresh grain right the sprouting has been shown to increase methionine and cysteine content in the food so this helps very much in anti cancerous properties maltin increases the bioavailability of micronutrients that is very important here and my list that's why the children especially in the weaning we use this very much maltin like after sprouting we powder it and amylase reduces the bulk by breeding down the starch like for example if you give the kaipadi and kind of things uh, since there is no germination and live enzyme the child will feel the gastric disturbances but uh, when this uh, millet was sprouted though it is high fibrous sprouted and then malted this will not give a gastric disturbances in kids so malting also reduces the tannin content and phytate content which improves the ionizable iron and soluble zinc significantly it reduces the protein content and uh, but improves the protein efficiency ratio that is the very important thing the bioavailability will it's not how much you consume how much it is efficiently utilize the body so this is improved by malting and uh, it also lowers the anti nutrients so in a natural the bioavailability of certain nutrients such as iron improves considerably by weaning foods prepared by you have higher iron popping and popping enhances the protein and carbohydrate digestibility especially for complex carbohydrate soaking of millet prior to heating can activate the phytases and thereby improve the zinc availability zinc is very important for our mental well being too and zinc is also needed for absorption of iron and niacin so most commonly what happens is our people today uh, when we talk so much about millet why they are not using today because we know not only just you and me or dietitian or a healthcare professional but even a common man knows that this is very important and very good but what happened what made them to go for the ready to eat food is a simple reason they say it is no or less time because women are also working and we cannot keep on going behind malting and sprouting and doing all the other things and convenient and the other inspiration like uh, nobody is telling to us that this is having so many of uh, nutritional benefits but uh, other products or like oats or something else going on it is always advertised so we are influenced by them the very important thing people always says is the color and texture of uh, millets are not very comfortable and palatability and for some like even in andhra pradesh tamil nadu and karnataka for some it will be like hey, it's a old food yeah it's so boring so these are the reasons commonly said by people and it is why the usage has gone down however with the international millet year we hope it will be improved but i'm so scared when i saw like actually i was not ready to do this webinar uh, but when i saw this advertisement of uh, one of the famous product they are bringing the ragi crunchers and uh, millet noodles we cannot make oh. noodles with the millet why because they are not comfortable because the uh, properties in the millets doesn't give it to need it because of their moisture we cannot need it to make a rotis except bajra other things are not comfortable to need and made into this kind of noodles and all so this is definitely not a single millet it is definitely having some wheat or even maida to make it into the noodles so we have to consider whether it is safe or not and we have to like definitely there will be i doubt there will be a trans fat acid hidden in that so other possible alterations millets as i mentioned earlier it is not a flow single to suitable for bakery products so that way 
we cannot be sit and relax because people can mix it with wheat or even maida to bring out the bakery products because uh, international year is going to bring up a lot of already brought up a lot of startups so people may go for papad muruka papad muruka and all is possible but bakery products is not possible it's definitely it will be adulterated and exclusion cooking that is like making pasta vermicelli and other ready to eat foods also can make come up again we have to check out the safety of this and we as dietitian should work on the parboiling of sorghum and millet is scanty even though the potential has been established whether it is really agricultured as much as the need in conclusion i would like to say millets are safe food secured because of the sustainability for the changing climate because if i buy this for this year i can keep the ragi flour without any problem for next 3 or 6 months it is very sustainable and resistant to the, the crops are also resistant to the climatic stress and even pest the crops are very much resistant to the pest and disease we don't get much diseases in millet crops like as we get in the other rice or other vegetable crops vegetable crops are not at all sustainable rice or better and uh, millets are very much helpful for agriculturist when it comes to the nutritional security definitely millets are rich in nutrients they have a bioactive compounds and better for amino acid profile and if you ask me whether it is secure food for your health definitely it prevents you from micronutrient deficiency to non communicable diseases and it is also gluten free which helps in irritable bowel syndrome and or any other gut related problems and the low gi will is the very important thing for our indian subcontinental people where our metabolism is more of visceral obesity there this low gi and complex carbohydrates give us a much better solution and if you ask about the economical security definitely we get a much economical this is because our own crops this has a good it's a wild crops too so the climate resilient makes it a better and the investment is very very low for the agriculturist and sustainability is high so how we dietitians are going to combat this nutritional because whatever is maybe good 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 the best but we have a, another story which says that even you have a diamond in your hands you should know the worth of it isn't it so how are we going to combat the nutritional illiteracy community education is the very important but when i say community education people think it's only going and teaching in schools and colleges better go for a different ideas today children want more better versions we can do like in today also even my health psychology students who is i'm training for the phd they have come out with a beautiful board games for food and nutrition so some board can games can be introduced quizzes can be conducted other active sports also can be involved into the community education programs lifestyle revolution should be there we should always keep on speaking against junk and fads and please don't stop talking about negative foods and please involve in more of scientific researchers we need to study more and more about this and to answer the question whether it can be the answer for malnutrition free india definitely yes and my message for the day is let's start it from our kitchen and inspire the nation i think the question session will be after our dear kalpana ma'am session thank you all thank you so much ritriya ma'am as we all know she is a brain of uh, community nutrition forum but i think the introduction for her was not yet done so i would like to invite uh, minu maria uh, i hope she is here Thank you, ma'am. Can you hear? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Hello. Please. Yeah, yeah, I can hear okay. you. Thank you, ma'am, for sharing our session. Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Minu, you can. I can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay. Doctor Sweetie Shaji, MSc, and PhD in Psychology and BSc in Nutrition and Dietetics. She is a associate member. Life member in Indian Association of Clinical Psychologists, life member in International Association for Holistic Psychology, and member in various other organizations. So 
So her special achievements include founder of Women Mental Health India and founder member of Community Nutrition for Kerala. And she has many international and national publications and eminent speaker for many conferences. She is a person fascinated in industry in research and publication. Personally, her own clinic, founder of Trisha Counseling, which is affiliated to World Federation of Mental Health. We are proud you to have here as a speaker, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, so much. Thank you so much, Minu. And I think everyone is embedded with the uh, speaks of um, Ms. Uma and also uh, Ms. Shripi Ashaji. So now let's uh, jump on to the next uh, uh, guest speaker. So before that, let me share my screen. Hope uh, it's visible, right? Uh, can anyone confirm? Yes, it's visible. Okay, so now let me invite our dynamite of community nutrition forum. I personally feel she's the book of uh, knowledge uh, and she's the best person to invite the guest of our day. So that is Dr. Manju P. George. Uh, 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 she is the chief dietitian of uh, VPS Lecture Hospital, Kuchi. So I would like to welcome her. Thank you, Tanishma. With immense pleasure and privilege, let me introduce my dear mentor and motivating guide, Professor C.A. Kalpana. <clears throat> Ma'am is currently doing as the Deputy Dean School of Home Science and uh, Professor in Food and Nutrition, Avinash Lingam uh, Institute for Home Science and Higher Education for Women, Coimbatore. Uh, and uh, ma'am, uh, there is so much to introduce, ma'am. Let me brief uh, the introduction in uh, two, three slides. Her areas of specialization include community nutrition, obesity, vitamin D, nutraceuticals and functional foods, nutrigenomics, gut microbiome, animal model studies, digital health technologies, application of artificial intelligence in nutrition research. She has uh, been guiding MPhil students around six numbers and 11 PhD scholars are under her. Uh, she has got many awards and achievements and many paper presentations, best paper awards, poster presentations, national and international levels, and guest speaker. And moreover, uh, she has awarded the Lifetime Achievement Award in 2018 by uh, Nehru Co Memorial College. Next slide. And a relation uh, regarding recognitions and achievements, uh, she is a member of Discovery and R&D Research Platform with Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and member of Editorial Board uh, with uh, different organizations. She has been the Organizing Secretary ICMR and many of the uh, initiatives undertaken. And she has got life memberships with the uh, um, World Obesity Federation and member of IDA, <coughs> NSI, HSAI, and she is an, a member of American Society of Nut for Nutrition. Next slide. She has got uh, one book publication on obesity and 42 journals and seven book chapters to her credit. Next slide. And she has, uh, she has been invited as a guest speaker and uh, a resource person to many international bodies. And latest visit include uh, November 2022 at Surabaya for the WUACD conference as invited speaker. Now the floor is yours, ma'am. Uh, very nice and uh, welcoming you once you. again to this forum. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, very good evening to all of you. Hope I'm audible and uh, thank you, uh, dear Manju. Uh, it was a sweet surprise that uh, you were uh, for introducing me. I never expected that. And thank you, Dr. Sripriya, for this opportunity. And let me uh, share the screen. I uh, hope it is visible. Not yet, ma'am. Now is it visible? Uh, not yet. Yeah, because I was telling Dr. Shripriya and Dr. Manju also for the last minute, I'll be putting some uh, changes. That's why I was not able to share it in advance. 
Uh, shall I send to your mail? Someone can share it. Uh, Sri Priya, uh, ma'am, can you able to? Yeah, she's. Uh, ma'am, please send the mail to Sri Priya. She's to your mail. Ah, oh, yes. Sorry, uh, participants. In the meantime, when we are rectifying this, if you have any doubts, to Uma, can you can post your questions? Is it all right, Uma? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, the stage is now for, set for the question and answer session till the technical glitches being set. So you can, I think uh, there are a few uh, questions in the chat box so that you can able to take up and uh, uh, you can uh, do the things. Yeah, Dr. Sripri, I have shared the PPT. Sorry for that inconvenience because I was telling Manjuna was there was last minute some additions were there. That's fine, ma'am. We all can understand. Tanishma, can you please read out the question? Uh, yeah, sure. One second. So let me just figure out some questions here. I think Ansa had a question, right, Anna? Ansa? But now I'm not able yeah, to. Yeah, Ansa had a question. Is there any particular method to follow for sprouting and malting millets? Yeah, I think uh, Sri Priya's slide was also explaining how to uh, sprout and do malting. It is the same like, uh, like uh, I have sprouted ragi and pearl millet. It is the same way like we do uh, uh, green gram, no? Pachapayar mulapikin all the same method only. You have to soak it for 12 hours. Or six hours, then you have to keep it in a muslin cloth and uh, wait for it to sprout. And it again, like uh, usually the easiest one is green gram. We can easily um, sprout within uh, overnight or so. But uh, millets, uh, especially ragi and uh, pearl millet, it was taking 24 hours for me. And uh, as uh, Sri Priya mentioned, if it is taking more than 72 hours, that means the grain is not, the quality is not good. So that is the identification. Otherwise, I don't think there is any special method the same way. Like we do, uh, like uh, uh, the sprouting of green gram only, we have to sprout these things also. And uh, malting, uh, again, uh, like you can uh, do the same way like we do other grains, the same way only we have to do the malting as well. And another question from Ansa itself is how is the sh uh, shelf life of millet and what should be kept in mind while storing them? Shelf life, as uh, Sri Priya mentioned, it has got uh, uh, very good resistance for the pests. So you can store it, store it uh, for more than uh, what we do for rice and wheat. And uh, then definitely roasting and all will improve the shelf life also. You can roast and powder so that roasting is, a, you know, it is half cooked, right? So it will stay for more time. So while roasting, you have to remember that uh, it is a nice aroma. When you are roasting in a kadai, you don't have to put any oil or anything. Just dry, dry roast it. Heat the kadai and put whatever millet you want to, like uh, little millet or pearl millet. Just roast it and a uh, nice aroma comes. When you put the millet raw in the, inside your mouth and chew it, you get a raw taste. But when you roast it, now after some time, you, you get a nice smell. That is the point uh, you know, where you come to know it is roasted well. And you can put one uh, one or two millets and you just try chewing it. It, it becomes like katak. That sound comes you know, when it is uh, roasted well. So that is the identification. And um, that aroma is another identification. That is uh, uh, the way usually I do. I don't know whether any extra methods are there. Maybe Sripri can explain. And uh, powdering, I didn't, I didn't uh, hear that. What is that? Uh, no, uh, you can answer it later, Sripriya. Uh, you are sorting out that issue, right? I'll uh, we'll discuss that question. I, I think I can answer that. Uh, Alpana, ma'am? Yeah, I can answer yes, that uh, for the roasting because uh, the complex carbohydrates, uh, while you are roasting, the dextrinization, that is food chemistry, no, behind that and uh, the roasting, the dry roasting, 
there is a process called dextrinization taking place. And that's how the complex carbohydrates will be converted to the simple sugars. So that is one thing where we can go for an easy cooking and also the flavor and the aroma, the sensory. Thanks, ma'am. I think your video is, to, uh, is yeah. not on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I have sh shared my screen. I hope it's visible to everyone. Yes. Okay, and uh, can you uh, put it on a full screen? More? Yeah, yeah, sure. I just want to confirm before going in. Uh, Kalpana ma'am, one more question uh, related to the same thing. Uh, usually I identify with the smell and the texture. As I mentioned, is there any way, any other way to identify whether it is uh, roasted properly? No, when as it is getting roasted, you will you know you get a higher temperature and all, and then you get a burnt flavor. So yeah. it uh, there is it's a lot of uh, sensory attributes which are involved in it. The right temperature, all that is already done by research and it is there. And we have to stick on to the right temperatures. And during my talk, I'll be talking about the different millets okay. so that uh, I'll I think people can know about it. No? Okay, shall I start, ma'am? So, yes. uh, yeah, once again, uh, very good evening, cool evening from Coimbatore here. I don't know about the other place over there. It's very, very cold here, uh, somewhat uh, similar to Uti uh, climate. And uh, greetings from uh, Nashlingam Institute for Home Science and Higher Education for Women. It's a deemed university exclusively for women and um, situated in the heart of Coimbatore city. And uh, next slide, please. And I'll be talking on millets, the nutrition yields when Dr. Sri Priya was asking me that day, what uh, topic, of course, this is uh, the passion, I would say, like uh, the international year of millets is only given now in 2023, but a lot of work has been gone into millets in our university, right from its inception when our uh, uh, mentor founder, Dr. Rajamal P. Devadas, whom, who is the doyen of nutrition, she has done a lot of work in millets and though I was new to this institute, I'm only 23 years into this institute, I started my work in millets and my PhD also was on millets, basically on childhood obesity. And uh, that was in almost from 2003 onwards, I'm working on millets, especially uh, Kodo millet. And something uh, now the people all of, uh, almost the past six months, I could see people uh, talking and literally walking and talk, talk and walk on millets only is happening. But this is something uh, which is not very, very new as the previous speaker also was telling to our culture or our tradition or to our country. Next slide, please. So uh, to introduce the millets, it is one of the oldest foods and the first grain used for the domestic purpose. That's why the title also I gave as the Nutri Cereals. It is one of the cereals, it's a co cereal. And uh, right from Africa, even now in Africa, there are a lot of studies from Nigeria, whom I have an interaction with the Agricultural University in Nigeria, in Food Technology Department. They are also working a lot in millets. So they also do some product development and I was discussing with them somewhat, it was on par. That's how it is, Africa and India, the staple food for thousands of years were millets and uh, slowly it was, uh, we went into the paddy cultivation and the wheat cultivation. So millets are well grown in the humid habitats of tropics and subtropics. That means it has, it really needs only a little water. That's why, you know, in Africa, it is grown much where it is mostly a rain fed area. It's not a rain fed area. I would say it's very dry area. And similar to India also where there are places where there is less rain, millets can be grown. And millets were introduced as farming in India in 2500 BC itself. And now only we are talking a lot of millets, but it people doesn't know, no, especially down in Tamil Nadu, you know, now it's picking up. But I know that I'm also, uh, basically my father was a native of Karnataka, KGF. So I have, uh, as a, a child, when I have traveled to uh, Kolar gold fields, I, uh, I had eaten only this uh, ragi balls, which you call this ragi mudda, you know. So I still remember the millets were very popular in that area, right? Not from Karnataka, I mean from Tamil Nadu. So it's a minor grain crop. And as I said, it is a very important crop even now in the Deccan Plateau. Next slide, please. 
and uh, the millet's uh, production and consumption you can see over here that is, india is one of the largest producers of many kinds of millets which many of us are not aware of it and 40% of the global millet production is from india and the total production that is the uh, 2005 uh, census I've, statistics have given that is 98 uh, lakhs and 10000 million tons per annum and rajasthan uttar pradesh gujarat maharashtra and tamil nadu and haryana were the uh, the millets are cultivated much though karnataka is also cultivating most of these states are also uh, uh, represented here and india ranks first in the global consumption and 11th in the per capita consumption of millets so i wanted to give some uh, statistics about the agricultural aspects and the per capita consumption of millets next slide and the types of millets, I think the previous speakers have given enough of this so that I can skip this slide. It's only we have we have to uh, classify as the minor millets and the major millets. Next slide, please. Yeah, major millet and minor millet are very, very important when we go for a research. It's not for consumption or for a diet, etc. But when we go for a research, we have to you know, specify the types of millets as major millet or the minor millet and you can see that ragi or the foxtail or the pearl millet are the common major millets and the barnyard millet or the guinea millet kodo millet which i have done a lot of research will i'll be talking to you about that is the minor millets and also with the uh, speakers previous speakers i said about the multi millet i think even two days back i gave a talk on choco diet uh, i think dr Sripriya was there and i was talking about the millets too in that, I, uh, I was very, very uh, particular that the research or whatever consumption or whatever product you are eating or any recipes do not go for a multi-millet recipe or a multi-millet product because each millet has its unique properties of its physical chemical or sensory or cooking, whatever it is, everything is the food chemistry we teach and the organic compounds especially the each millet right from its seed coat i would say seed coat the thickness of the seed coat the what do you call the texture of the seed coat and each millet has its own properties of how it will be digested i mean the digestibility the absorption of the metabolism and the end products the metabolites and each millet is varied so I, as a nutritionist with uh, this experience in millets, I would say that you have to go for a single millet consumption and multi-millet consumption will not support any of your health benefits. Next slide, please. Next slide. One second. One second. Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, these are some of the nutritive value because the topic is on nutri cereals. So I thought uh, almost the major nutrients I had projected here. If you could see the total calories, this column, almost all the millets are similar. This is per 100 grams. So you take any millet per 100 grams, it just gives a similar kilocalories. But the variation you can see only in the content of the protein and the fat and the fiber. So you can see that ragi and kudo millet and guinea millet, which we do not use that much, it is a sort of uh, pearl millet, only like thinai. But uh, most, uh, mostly when we go for a research, we go for a ragi or a kodo millet because of its high fiber, dietary fiber, and low in total fat when we are going for an obesity study. Next slide. Yeah, so here starts the journey of uh, one millet because as I said, I'm very, very particular. I do, I do not talk about multi millets at all anywhere. And that's how I uh, took up one particular millet for my research right from the year 2003 or four. And still I'm going on with the obesity research. But of course I do not do any research now in millets because I have almost finalized everything. So I can tell you the story of the Kodo millet which is called Varaga in Tamil. I think you can, in your own language, you can just check it out. The botanical name is Paspillum scrobiculatum. It's an annual millet. 
and it grows in region with comparatively low rainfall. Next slide, please. So the nutri nutritional value of codomelitis, the energy and the protein you can see per 100 grams, which we had done it in our lab. And we have found out this, the dietary fiber is nine grams over here. This is what is given from research. This is the entire thing we had analyzed in our nutrition lab. Next slide, please. So uh, the nutritional information overall is, it contains 37 to 38% of dietary fiber because all of us talk about dietary fiber in my next few slides, you can see about dietary fiber and the fat content ranges from 1.1. And also millets, uh, they are rich in uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids, which are also very, very beneficial to the health, especially the cardiovascular diseases. And the mineral content is also higher than the rice and wheat. That's why millets, we can claim it is superior to the other cereal grains. Next slide, please. So some of the innovative products, uh, this is just I had mentioned, but there are many other products we can develop and we have developed we can supplement with the cereal-based products, the chapati and those are baked foods. But it's quite, as I said, we have to choose. The millets are very, very tricky uh, coarse cereals. The cereals, the millets, the nutri cereals are very, very, very tricky because we have to be very choosy and select which will go for which. See, in Varagu, it's very, very hard, the seed coat. I, I, I couldn't even do any baked food. But probably ragi, Ragi, we have done a ragi cake in our lab It's uh, for the food product development. So that's what this, I was talking about, the innovative products and the extruded foods, noodles and rusk as uh, some, I think the previous speaker was mentioning about, we cannot go in for uh, a baked food or a noodles or whatever it is because of the gluten content in it. Because there is no gluten in it. It is only in the wheat and maida, you know, as food scientists and nutritionists. So that's why in abroad uh, for US or any other countries, they are now going for millets. That is the reason probably maybe the United Nations are also bringing the International Year of Millets because they want to create an awareness of millets because abroad in uh, most of the uh, foreign countries, people are uh, gluten, they have gluten intolerance. So millets are gluten free. So that may might be one of the reason where we can bring it for uh, substitute for these gluten-rich foods. Next slide, please. So uh, when we say, I think from here, I will start with the uh, uh, in-depth research findings. With that only, I'll be giving the talk as such. So uh, millets have uh, anti-diabetic anti potential because they have low glycemic index. Dietitians are here. So you would have tested it already. And they decrease the cholesterol levels because they are insoluble fiber. They are insoluble fiber and maintains healthy body weight. So this healthy body weight and the obesity research combined with the codomelet, that's what I'm going to present to you in a few slides. So what all we can do? How can we uh, include this for any health benefits? We can enrich food products. We can use it as a nutraceutical or a dietary supplement and also a functional food, which I have not mentioned over there. Nutraceuticals in the sense you can extract. Dietary supplement, you just supplement functional foods as a food you will be giving. And I have, a, uh, I, I have actually a strategy developed and implemented and found out about the meal replacement. I will be telling that also in the next few slides. Next slide, please. So this is one uh, research. It's an MPhil research, Kaushika. She's in Saudi Arabia now, uh, and uh, this was in 2011. This, uh, we did an incorporation study with uh, Codomillet uh, incorporated recipes at 30% level and 50% level. And we took up all the commonly available consumed South Indian foods like it's listed out there, including breakfast items and then also some of these snacks. And here I have to say, as I'm uh, uh, talking about millets and all these things, a uh, small, small, hints and tips I might be giving here and there. Never go for an incorporation less than 30%. Then your study is not valid. You just, I have seen people give, incorporating 5%, for example, 95% of uh, rice and 5% of millets. It's not going to help you in any of the health benefit as well as for leave the research. I'm talking about any health benefits also. 
So you have to incorporate, if you're going for an incorporation study from 30% and 50%, not millets, anything, any, any other source. Suppose you're not able to incorporate, suppose that product, some leaf you're going to extract and incorporate. You're not going to incorporate that. You better not do the study. Better not give it to anyone. This is my advice out of my experience. Next, next slide, please. So these are the recipes that were incorporated, 30% and 50% incorporations, the best we have projected here. Only thing, the appearance changes because the millets as such, you know, they have their own uh, color. So uh, otherwise, the taste-wise, these were all undergo undergone uh, uh, overall acceptability test. And then only we had projected here and presented also. Next slide. This is also some of the uh, snacks items. I think only soup, there was lots of dietary fiber. Next slide. Yeah, this is what the dietary fiber content we had analyzed in our lab. And almost it was uh, right from four to six, six was the chapati, because already uh, it was a wheat flour incorporation, 70 wheat flour and 30 grams of millets and uh, 50 wheat flour and 50 grams of millet in the 50%. So that's why it is six grams over there in the dietary fiber. Otherwise, uh, it was almost four to five grams. Next slide. This is also the snacks except the soup because uh, there was not much dietary fiber in the soup. Otherwise, Kolkata also it was there. Next slide. These were all some of the research findings. This is one study uh, she's doing. Nithya now she's doing this is an MSc study. She's doing a PhD at Gandhi Gram now. And uh, this was a study where in, in 2014, this was actually funded by the DST. Part of the study was the DST project on metabolic syndrome. Here we compared with the standard, the earlier study we did not compare like in the standard 30% and 50% only we compared. But this we compared with the, uh, the standard idli or dosa and this was not incorporation. This was a full recipe like in, we have included millets fully, not like just incorporating. This was another study. Next slide. Some of the recipes here. Next slide. Yeah, this was a booklet also, which was part of that research. And uh, still I have the booklet. And if anyone needs it, I can give it to you also. We have uh, compiled all the uh, findings of the study and with the nutritive value, with the serving size, the ingredients, with everything, this is only a glimpse of the booklet I'm projecting here. Next slide. So this is what the condition, we talk about so many things about food and diet and nutrition. We talk at international level, we talk, we have a lot of organization helping us, even uh, as we are going to uh, create awareness due, uh, for this community nutrition forum. But there are still a few people this is what is the status of obesity or health, when we could say. Next slide. So from here, I have to start on the research findings related to obesity and millet. So this is the Indian scenario, childhood obesity, Kapil et al. and uh, Mr. et al. Both are from All India Institute of Medical Sciences, well-known researchers in obesity and uh, that was a way, way back in 2008 and uh, it was only 13.1 percent obese now probably after 10 years it will be more or less also so it was 24.2 percent obese among 14 to 17 years this is the Indian scenario way back 10 years back next slide and this is the uh, prevalence of obesity in which this was my uh, study at PhD when I submitted in 2010 among 7 to 12 years but this is the uh, prevalence of obesity, almost 11,470 children we have to screen. But at that, that time, it was 6%. Next slide. This is again in Coimbatore City. You can see, though the years are 2004, 2009, but every no other five years, five years, the obesity is increasing. So there are a lot of factors we found out. But I just wanted to project this, how the obesity is. We cannot reduce the prevalence of obesity in our country. It is still increasing, though we do a lot of interventions, diet and environmental and digital health, whatever we speak of. So many organizations are working on it. So many uh, uh, people are working on it. Still, obesity is in the rampant because it is not only food and exercise, it is also genetics. And we are also working now on that nutrigenomics side. Next slide. 
So this is again one more slide of the prevalence of obesity. As I said, it is still increasing in all age groups. Next slide. This is the uh, latest 2020 because I am a World Obesity Federation member. So I get uh, you know, first-hand information from the World Obesity newsletters and the prevalence. And this is what is the picture from the World Obesity Federation about the prevalence of obesity in India. This is only 10 to 19 years. When we see the adults, next slide, you can see that this is also done in, next slide, please. Next. Yeah, this is, uh, any one of you can just go to this link and you can see anyone. It is not necessary to be a World Obesity Federation member. You can just go and see and you can put for adults or which year on adolescent year wise, state wise, district wise or country wise, anywhere you can go and see. You can get such things so that you will know what is happening in the world uh, related to obesity. What is the prevalence? Next slide. So with this in mind, we have to concentrate on the dietary fiber, which is not a crude fiber. Crude fiber, we, we do not consider for any uh, research as such of now. It, we just analyze it. But dietary fiber is the most analyzed and most useful in the studies. And this particular thing is my own PhD research. I had uh, projected here. This is coda millet, as I said, and curry leaves and horse gram and different proportions. Next slide. Here comes uh, you know, that roasted and powdered, what we are talking about. Uh, can you go to the previous slide? I'm sorry. Yeah, here I think that some questions were in the chat box. I think even now it is there, whether we can powder the millets and it depends upon what usage you are. I will, I think uh, one more, two more slides, we can see that in wherever, uh, see for example, I showed you that uh, incorporated recipes of idli and uh, all those chapati and all 30% and 50%, if you could recall, there, wherever we have to powder it, we roast it and powdered it and incorporated. Wherever we can use it as whole, for example, for pongal, we have to use it as a whole. But for other things, when we want like a flour or something, we have to roast it, powder it, we have to incorporate it in the chapati. So here uh, we plan to make it as a kolkata, you know, that uh, steamed one. Uh, Modagam, you say, and uh, that is how we roasted and powdered and uh, curry leaves, why we shade dried and powdered is you cannot dry it in sun because shade drying will retain the beta carotene value, which is very, very helpful. So why we chose this? Because this is a complete balanced diet except for the fruit. We cannot include fruit in this product. Next slide. So this is how uh, I prepared a uh, mix and a kolkata. This was developed as a snack and it, this was given as a snack replacement. Next slide. So this is what was my study. Uh, in 2010, I submitted and 10 to 12 years obese boys and girls, I had to talk to their mothers. And then in the school itself, the school had a kitchen. So that's how we have to find out you know, the ways in which we, we can enter into the community. So because this is a community nutrition forum and a lot of work and my passion is community nutrition right from my uh, college level. And uh, we have, when you go to the community, we just can't enter into the community. They will not accept when you take a new uh, idea or when you tell about, especially when you're working with children. And so that's why you can see here, I call the mothers. It was in the school itself, I conduct the meeting. I called the principal, I spoke to the teachers. That's how we have to know it should be, I would say it should be an individual based a school-based, if you're working in a school, and a family-based, and then a community-based. So if you're going to straight into a village and working, it should be an individual-based, family-based, and a community-based. So your study or whatever intervention you're going to give, it has to be going into that area of the community-based or school-based also. So uh, this particular uh, study was also a breakfast replacement. The previous slide, it was snack replacement in the evening snack, the schools we gave, and the snack of the children were replaced. Here, this particular slide, which is also an MPhil study, uh, she, I think Anbu Selvi is now in Belgaum, in Karnataka only, and she's, uh, uh, she had done her MPhil study in this area of obese adolescent girls, and we did a breakfast replacements where 
we prepared the flour and we didn't just give one snack or one uh, recipe. See, that's also I want to talk to the dietitians. You prepare a holistic uh, you know, powder or a preparation or a mix. That would be a nice word. And then you can use that for different uh, recipe preparation. Likewise, we did for cold because it will be monotonous if you are giving just one particular snack. So what we did, we standardized the flour mixture and then we made that mixture, kolkata one day and roti and then porridge one day. Just we asked this adolescent girls to come to the food lab and morning hot, hot, we were able to provide the breakfast. We, we, they're not allowed to eat breakfast of their own. They have to eat this breakfast only for four months. And of course there was weight reduction. Next slide. The next one or two slides will give you all values about uh, this research, the nutrient content of these Kolkata roti and porridge, almost the dietary fiber I've highlighted and also the fat I've highlighted. I think, hope you can all see that the fat content was very, very less because when we go for obesity, that also you should be very, very judicious when you are selecting a study or when you are going into the community or you're going to prepare a customized diet plan and all. You have to keep in mind, step into the shoes of the person and then you have to do and also the condition because I'm going, I was doing an obesity study the fat content matters. See, why didn't I take a bajra, the pearl millet? Because the fat in the bajra, because people were asking me, that's very commonly available. Why did you go to kodo millet? Because I analyze. You have to do some pre preparations when you go to anything, no? So uh, this, as I said, these are all small, small tips I'm telling you. So uh, when I'm doing an obesity study, I can't take bajra. Bajra's fat content is very high when compared with the other millets. So that's how you can see how the three, because it's entirely the same thing. And uh, we had to go for a, steamed variety of recipe. We cannot add oil. Even this roti, this minimum oil we could add because the name itself is roti. It's very difficult uh, not to add oil. Next, next slide, please. So this is one uh, project I got from DST in 2015 here. This was also an adolescent girls on metabolic syndrome. Here the entire millet, see, you can see this is all whole millets, kodo millet only. But uh, this was actually a processed millet project. It, it, we didn't go for the full millet with the seed coat. And uh, with that, we developed the different recipes, formulated recipes, pongal and uh, biryani and so much tomato meals and mint pulao, all, all the recipes. And this project was for the lunch replacement. The first one was snack replacement, only the snack we replaced, evening snack. Second study was the breakfast replacement. That is known as the meal replacement strategy, which is very famous abroad, but in India, it is not that known. But so when I went uh, for a presentation and when I had a contact with the World Obesity uh, Federation, this meal replacement strategy, uh, it struck me a lot. So I thought, oh, why can't I try that also? So this was only a small uh, step into it and we were able to achieve greater results. So at the entire lunch, the students were not asked to bring their lunch. They came and we prepared the lunch and gave and there was a weight reduction and there was also a decreased body fat percentage. Next slide, please. Yeah, this is how we prepared the uh, previous slide. Yeah, at, in the food lab, we hired a person because it's a project. We had to standardize the recipe. Then we have to weigh it, pack it, and we gave it to the students. And they were asked to sit in the lab itself on one side, and they were eating it also. Next slide. Yeah, this is the anthropometric measurements before and after the meal replacement. And you can see that almost the difference was weight. There was almost 2 kg difference. This was a four-month study, almost 120 days. Body mass index also reduced. Next slide. Uh, the body waist to hip ratio, waist to hip ratio also, there was a significant difference. Next slide. This was the body fat percentage. They were also the first group that was a meal replacement group with nutrition education. We cannot just, just give them a meal replacement without nutrition education. So that is how it was also a significant uh, levels, uh, body fat percentage decrease. These were all for the lunch meal replacement study. Next. So we talk a lot of dietary fiber, prebiotics. Pro, I think Dr. Shripriya was talking about the probiotics. Probiotics, of course, they are fermented, but now we talk a lot of prebiotics. Prebiotics, because they only will create an environment for the probiotics to multiply and flourish. So first of all, when we are going for a study nowadays, even for a diet plan, 
or to the community for a, for a week, you have to give them a prebiotic. So the prebiotic will set the pace right. That means the prebiotic will improve the gut flora, the gut microbiota, and that will improve if you are having, you're adding a probiotic later. Otherwise, just adding probiotics first in the first stage itself might not be that effective to benefit for the microbiota to be uh, multiplying or to be beneficial. So one such prebiotic, I would say, is the millet. So no one is talking about that aspect of millet. So we have started a study in that also. Uh, we are planning for giving a supplementation to the children for their cognitive development because there is a gut brain axis. You can study about that also. So prebiotics, millets is very, very important as prebiotics. Of course, whole grains, fruits and vegetables are also prebiotics, especially in reducing the cancerous cells. But since this uh, forum is on millets, I have highlighted that. And the prebiotic because of its insoluble fiber. Next slide. So this is the gut microbiota. I'm not going in detail because uh, this might go out of the topic, but only uh, to highlight that prebiotics, they are fermentation products and they will ferment the short chain fatty acids, which will help in the growth of the uh, gut microbiota, the entire microflora, the beneficial bacteria. So that will inhibit the phytochemicals we talk about, the PUFA, as I told you, the polyunsaturated fatty acids. So entire thing, millets, if you see this particular slide and uh, correlate with the millets, it will develop metabolic and immune functions. And it will increase the, uh, stimulates the growth of beneficial bacteria in the gut. So off late, we are working on this gut microbiota related to the prebiotics. Next slide. So this is again a bird's eye view of how the functional foods, functional foods can be anything. Here we can take it as a millet and how the metabolites of the functional food components, when the gut microbiota digests and the metabolites comes out, there is, it is known as a metabolomic study. Next slide. So related to millets, it is not just like new something as we are all talking about. I had presented about these studies in about Coda millet, this uh, in international presentation at Chicago as American Society for Nutrition member, I had attended the experimental biology. At that time, American Society of Nutrition was a part of experimental biology. From 2018, they are working separately. So in that uh, international conference at Chicago, USA, I was able to present two posters, effect of a homemade fiber rich food that was entirely on millets and uh, green greens that uh, drumstick leaves and uh, millet, ragi, that was ragi and drumstick leaves which we usually we work on, is it not? And then the second paper was on the nutrition education, this metabolic syndrome study. And that was well you know, uh, accepted. And I could uh, see that people coming and asking me, where, where is the millet? Can you show us the millet? It was all in the posters and the photos only. I said, definitely I, I cannot bring because you cannot take some food samples to other countries. It, it is not uh, legal to take. So I said, I, I, can, I couldn't bring it. So that's how it is, you know, people were uh, asking about what is this millet's right for many five years back itself. And as I said, uh, one research we are doing on gut microbiota. This is one PhD research we are almost started. Uh, it's a nutrient enriched homemade soluble food folds. This is also on millets only. How we can prepare a food fold which will be soluble and inside we'll pack something and it will make it soluble. It's one of my PhD scholar from Hyderabad, she's working on this. Next slide, please. So uh, we are in a world of, uh, we were, I would say this was, uh, uh, I would say that uh, we were in a world of epidemic, then pandemic and infodemic, we are. That's why I could not change that where. Okay, so with this only, I think Dr. Manju George, uh, she had worked under my guidance on the uh, digital computing and a lot of uh, infodemics were there, information. So do not get you know, like uh, carried away by things. That's why I say we are in a world of infodemics. Lot of messages, get up in the morning in the WhatsApp and whatever in the mail, whatever it is, mostly in the WhatsApp, whatever. You get so many messages, 
we have to check it as nutritionists, as dietitians. We have to see whether this is authentic. There only is our role to help the community. Now, whoever it is, it can be your neighbor. It can be somewhere you take your child to the school and uh, you meet some other uh, homemaker there. Because they, I have seen, I have experienced that. I have experienced that. People are telling me that I bought one kg of olive oil. My own church member, she said, I bought one kg of olive oil and I'm going to cook in that. I said, for what? That is a Mediterranean diet. Why did you buy one kg of oil? You should have asked me. No, that's what everyone are telling. We cook in olive oil. See the temperature, the, the smoking temperature of olive oil, the fatty acid chain makeup, all that you cannot, you cannot go on for a puri frying or a, a vade or a bonda frying in olive oil. Okay, so it's it's only in the Mediterranean region people were uh, people are using olive oil, but what we say we have all good sesame oil, groundnut oil, and everything is there. But people leave that and go. So that is where we uh, nutritionists in the community and this particular uh, nutrition community nutrition forum, it's a role and a burden on us. I would say on our shoulders that we have to give them correct information and we have to take the population in the right path for the health. Next slide. So this is what uh, I always put this it's a good diet, balanced diet and exercise. Next slide. And Eat Right India, all of us know about this. What is this? This is a campaign by the FSSAI where we have to adhere to these things and tell the community. Most of this Eat Right India was targeting the community only in creating awareness. Next slide. This is our mantra from NIN, my plate for the day, but how many of the population, not even the population, how many of us, we can question us, how many of us follow this? Next slide. So some of a few dietary and health tips, just invest in a good weighing scale, weigh yourself once a week, maintain a healthy weight. These I always give the end of my talks and nutrition, follow a healthy balanced diet, smart, make smart food choices and start being physically active. The first one, invest in a good weighing scale. I always tell my students also in any presentation, when you go for a wedding or anything, we, we carry gifts in for a birthday. Please give them a gift of a weighing scale because I've seen uh, ministers and chief ministers giving uh, books as gifts. You give a weighing scale. That's what I will say. Usually I will tell them, why do you buy so many other gifts and go, this is more, no, health is more precious for us than any other. Well, health is wealth. No, that's what we talk about. Next slide. So I acknowledge Dr. Manju P. George who introduced me to Dr. Sri Priya and uh, uh, my uh, PhD scholar Nongmai Tambabita for a few slides she had helped me. I thank them and acknowledge them. Next slide. And thank you very much for listening. Next slide. So any questions? If you have any questions, put it in the chat box or you can send it to my mail. Thank you so much for the organizers and thank you so much for the participants. Thank you all. Any questions? Thank you so much. Happy to yeah, yeah, thank you so much, ma'am. And it was indeed a great pleasure to have you here and with us. So uh, I'm really happy that I hope everyone uh, will be having some questions. So now the platform is open for the question and answer I session. I think there are a few questions in the chat box. Yeah. Can so we I'll... include multiple millets in our diet to bring more variety. That's what I said. We need not. When each one millet itself, you can bring a lot of. How can we use millets to improve hormone health? Like uh, we have not done any studies on hormones or thyroid imbalance, PCOS. Uh, mainly I would say that this might be related to obesity. So definitely as a prebiotic with a dietary fiber, millets will reduce weight. Uh, thereby I have done a very, only one study in PCOS uh, and also one uh, PCOS studies in ML. So we uh, concentrate on the obesity. When you reduce the weight, automatically the PCOS also will be reduced. Anybody uh, else? Any other uh, questions? Ansa have raised her hand, so you can unmute. Hi. Her. Yeah. Uh, hi, ma'am. Uh, so I just wanted can to you ask introduce you something. yourself, please. Yes, uh, my name is Ansa Saju, uh, and I'm a sports nutritionist and a PhD uh, scholar here at Sri Ramchandra. Um, so my question is uh, actually regarding kodo millets. Um, so uh, a couple, probably two, three years back is when I had kodo millet for the first time. And there was a bit of, uh, you know, dry patch that developed on my elbow. And uh, 
actually after i stopped eating kodumulet it went back to you know how it was um so when i tried reading up on it they you know it showed that kodumulet can um, inhibit glycogen uh, sorry collagen glycation so uh, how can we actually uh, stop that from happening like how can we still include kodumulet and not have that effect on the body yeah uh, it's nice to meet you uh, ansa ramchandra call university poru yes ma'am okay and uh, this uh, collagen uh, uh, thing you said glycation of course we have not done any research on that i have not done a, i have not read about any articles because it has occurred to you you have be you have probed into it so i could also read it but i can give you one solution for this you can include a protein uh, like we have a pongal no with the rice and a dal supplementation together what do you call that yeah that mutual uh, type of uh, supplementation likewise probably uh, you can i have not since i have not worked on this and this is the first time i'm hearing about it i can give a suggestion of this one when you are yeah. taking a millet don't take it just like uh, millet rice you can take it as in the pongal suppose you want to take kodo millet as such or uh, you can add some as i said in combination <laughs> wherever such things are there add protein add protein in it because we are so, we know the nuances of that so is there anything like that you know if like we are consuming any millets is there anything that we need to keep in our mind yeah definitely as uh, the previous speakers were telling about soaking soaking it should be at least 6 to 8 hours or overnight definitely overnight i would suggest that's how the research findings are there what is the reason main reason is to reduce the phytic acid content almost in all the grains even in rice we have uh, phytic acids phytates no that's why we say that uh, you don't drink coffee or tea after eating your breakfast because that will hinder the absorption of iron same thing in millets millets has a high phytic acid content so that one soaking definitely soaking has to be there overnight soaking that will reduce the phytic acid content so that it will not hinder the absorption of most of the minerals i mean iron zinc calcium all these minerals almost they they themselves are fighting for their absorption sites so this is one thing i would say then secondly i always say eat only one millet don't go for a multi millet preparation third the digestibility the seed coat that's the so the soaking will improve that um, digestibility also and the protein aspect and whatever it is uh, i think sri priya ma'am was talking about the protein efficiency ratio so the quality of protein that is more important that's what she was mentioning about the protein efficiency ratio so where what i want to say is the digestibility part because it contains it's just like a greens even i think two days back i was talking about this just like a kira that greens you know like people uh, one person asked me there uh, if i eat this millets i have stomach upset it is irritating my stomach it's just i said do, do not eat millets then in the during the night because it's really it's a high fiber it's, it's a dense fiber content so you have to soak it if you are not cooking it properly or not processing it properly then definitely it cannot be digested and uh, that's how you you get some health problems like this and this is one thing uh, what you said i will uh, go and check it i'll review it and what can be done uh, probably if you could send your mail id put it in the chat box i can contact you are you dr hema malini student uh, no ma'am i am um, enrolled under professor arubugam in um, sports medicine thank you so much ma'am uh, excuse me ansa i just want to talk tell you about the collagen part yes this was first in uh, government medical college uh, rajiv gandhi government medical college tamil nadu chennai so my friend has taken up that research in that uh, especially for dermatological conditions and other skin allergic conditions uh, dehusking is the main reason because sometimes in organic shops you who are getting the unhusked millets also they say it is whole and uh, and polished or unhusked but when you have some irritants and allergic conditions you have to go for dehusked that seed fortification has to be done this commonly happens with the heavy coated millets not with the naked millets okay otherwise you can look in for the naked millets that is the substitute 
and another thing uh, there is a old saying in telugu like when we eat millets if you are eating like mountains you have to drink the ocean and you have to run around all the seven logas so like when that much of the content nutrients is there lot of water has to be taken so that the fiber will be digested and as ma'am has said that uh, irritability mainly because people who sit after this they are not having heavy physical work they has to be reinforced on lifestyle modification walking and exercises otherwise definitely millets will give a fullness and bloating that must be educated to everyone i think the question has opened uh, no an avenue for research already done in rajiv rajiv gandhi institute of uh, okay general hospital in chennai uh, by the dermatology department okay i'll try to share that uh, for yeah, you yeah tanishma any other questions it to be answered uh i can see some questions here on the chat box i think that so, is already answered i think it's just very simple answer so to the forum or to the platforms or anyone do you, i think heavy has raised her hand so do you have any other questions team if no we can conclude the session yeah before concluding the session i want everyone to just open their video so that we can make a screenshot yes all of you please I request all the participants to come to the video mode. And one more thing, Sri Priya, uh, if any of your um, any of our participants have to share anything extra than what we discussed, kindly do so because it is a very rare opportunity to meet everybody. So if anybody uh, has, I think they can share the feedback if they want, right? Not just the feedback. I'm telling about the millet. If they know yeah, any other, of feedback. course, yes. Yeah. Anything, really. Lily, would you like to share something? Uh, unmute yene Haley, please unmute yourself. You are muted now. Hi Haley, it's nice to see Haley here after many years. Uh, I think Haley is having some problem with the internet. Yes, yeah, she was one of our students. Oh, okay. Um, uh, I request everyone to on your camera so that we can take a screenshot of all of yours. Haley is trying to say something. I think Haley, internet. I think no question on that. Fluctuating internet. I think. Yeah. Fida, your face is not clear. Fida, ah, uh, background. When I give you the match, look, Fida. Light in the opposite level. Light. Ah, that light in the opposite. Alag kila background match yeh lum pati. Can you hear now? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Kalpana, ma'am. I was the uh, student of uh, National University while doing. Yes, I remember you. Yeah, how do you remember? Definitely. Okay, thank you go to time, see you. Go time, go time conference. Idea. Yeah, yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, that running still you are remembering. Thank you, ma'am. Happy to see you, ma'am. Now, uh, being part of this one. Uh, once again, thank you, Uma, and. Uh, uh, Sri Bria, on behalf of us, uh, Kalpana Ma'am, uh, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Haley. Yeah. Uh, please on your camera so that we'll take a screenshot of everyone. So yes. So three, two, one. Smile, please. I think if you take one more, few more have joined now. Yes, yes, yes. Seeing uh, that. Next time webinar, let's have camera time at all. Next time webinar, I think recordings. Any anybody anything else to share? Please go ahead. 
next time please to have it offline so that we can all meet in person <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll come to uti uti ma <laughs> yeah sure sure and not then never know you have to come <laughs> definitely thank you so much kalpana ma'am i'm uma so like uh, we got uh, very good insights about the research on uh, different millets especially the golden millet ma'am one doubt uh, in your slides no i was mentioning at uh, ragi bacha and jowar as uh, major millets but you mentioned it as uh, foxtail millet ragi and uh, uh, major millets yeah but <clears throat> pearl uh, millet foxtail millet and uh, ragi as major ragi. millet yeah but when i checked in the icmr uh, uh, website no it was mentioning as ragi bajar and jowar not uh, fox icmr it will give a different calf no okay. a classification icmr will give a different classification okay so which so one is exactly going correct? on to the agricultural no, site you go for okay. the icmr and check. okay okay so the IC, uh, iimr one is uh, not correct you are saying yes yes ragi bajra and uh, uh, fox tail fox tail no jowar is not there jowar was not there in your slide no okay. i didn't mention about jowar we do not that that much consider it as a millet at all ha 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 okay okay. okay but in the other one fox tail was you are talking about the sorghum no? yeah yeah so they had mentioned the uh, fox tail as minor millet actually So I was thinking maybe most of the place they use these three millets, no? Because of the yes, volume, they would have mentioned this. Okay. Based on their uh, no production and uh, no, that's the thing. Agricultural. Okay. But in agricultural university, that is uh, they even sorghum they separate. They will say yeah, sorghum yeah. and millets. Sorghum. Yeah. It is not. Uh, it's not even in the classification of millets. Yes. yes. Okay, and uh, about the calorie stripia, uh, like uh, I think you mentioned it as five percent is lesser calorie than other grains, but I, when I was comparing, it was almost the same. Maybe three fifty to three seventy range. It is coming in most of the millets, so maybe slightly lower, right? Yeah, it is very slightly. That is for just five percent. It is not three fifty, three three seventy and all. Is I think the bajra only have around three seventy, and all others are lesser than bajra and ragi. Ragi is the next uh, highest one. All the others are very, very uh, like five percentage difference will be there. Okay, okay. All right. So thank you so much, uh, Kalpana ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Ishma, Fida, Shripriya. Thank you all for uh, actively participating. Yeah, thank you, Ishma. You can go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much for all the participants who are here till now. So I'm so happy and privileged to see you all, and I hope that you have sharpened your brains from these eminent uh, speakers. And in case if you have any doubts, I think they have shared their mail IDs in the slide, so you can have a direct contact with them, and they will have a clear. Con- uh, I mean, uh, they will be. uh mentoring the you as well so now it's time to conclude our session so i would like to invite a vibrant and the energetic and also a founding member and also she is our technical team head sonia k joseph so she is a, a founding member also dietitian as the lissy hospital trivandrum to render the vote of thanks uh, sonia ma'am trivandrum is trivambadi trivambadi Uh, Sunia, ma'am, you are on mute. Thank you, Tanishma, for your kind words. Actually, it's Tiruvambadi in Calicut district. Yeah, okay. sorry, it's Tiruvambadi. So, okay. So today we have come to our, the end of our first national webinar. So it's a remarkable day for CNF, as you all know. And as twenty twenty three is celebrated as the International Year of Millets. See, we have kick started with our programs on millets. So today we had three great eminent speakers uh, with great sessions on millets. So Kalpana Ma'am, with her immense knowledge and vast experience uh, through her researches, she has given a detailed input on kudo millet and also the prevalence of obesity in our country. And also she has given how to conduct our research studies on millets. so she has given it in a very crisp and informative manner so in between her hectic schedule also she has readily accepted our invitation to join us for the webinar so i personally thank you ma'am on behalf of cnf also for giving us a detailed lecture on millets thank you ma'am thank you thank you so much
So millets are popular among dietitians, but still we have doubts on this usage of millets in day-to-day -day cooking. So now, uh, I know after Uma's session, we got a details information regarding their types. Everybody has given the about the types, their unique properties, and also, and she has given us the uh, information how to develop different healthy, nutritious recipes using millets. So thanking Uma for your wonderful session. Uh, see, as you all know that uh, Uma keeps us in inspiring us with her wonderful recipes. Or she daily she keeps posting all the innovative millet recipes so from starter. She'll be having some starters also from starter till desserts. She have many different recipes. So I hope we all will start uh, also including millets in our routine also. So hope to see everyone's yummy recipes soon in our group. Thank you, Uma. So as everyone knows, Sri Priya, she has uh, Sri Priya's brainchild is CNF. We all know that. And every day she comes up with her innovative and unique ideas to bring awareness to the public, as well as lifting the role of dietitians in our society. She puts her heart and soul into whatever she does. And we can see the fruitful end of the result also in that. And Sri Priya made us aware on how to replace our traditionally used cereals also with millets and also to make our diet more wholesome and healthy. So as nutri cereals are traditional cereals, they are nutritious and economical. So producing more uh, millets will give more opportunities for the farmers, as well as also it can, it is good for our ecosystem also. So once again, thanking you Sri Priya for giving us the ideas on the nutritional benefits and the bioavailability of the uh, uh, nutrients in the millets. And thus uh, we can fulfill our dream on the malnutrition free India. Thank you Sri Priya. So I would like to thank uh, our two other great pillars, uh, Sharin Chechi as uh, also Jyoti for making this event a great success. Thank you both of you. And also let me thank our MC Tanishma and also our uh, girls Pita, Minu and Dr. Manchu for their continuous support throughout the webinar for uh, coordinating this webinar. And also, last but not least, I would also thank each one of you who are present here for this uh, event and making this a grand success. Thank you, everyone, and have a good evening. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, Kankana, I have one more question. Thank you, Sonia. Uh, like uh, this exchange list, no, uh, is there any uh, separate exchange list for millets? No, no. No, we don't yes, have. So just Probably with that, the community nutrition forum can work on it. <laughs> uh, actually, our uh, old uh, NN book has got uh, all these things content in oh, this, but we it was not, not as uh, uh, man said it is a older one, older version. The newest version doesn't have a very much difference from the older version. Uh, that is about uh, RS Gopal and Sir and it all. Yeah, what yeah. they have done is the. RDA values we still have and doing working on that for our patients. Probably so if you can contact the Indian Institute of Millet Research in Hyderabad, uh, ah. they might they are doing a lot of research. Indian okay. Institute of Millet Research. In, ma'am, in case if you want to calculate, then uh, it is better to go with the separate one, no? Like individual ones, take the values and calculate, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you all, all. So thank you so much everyone for participating and wish we could uh, meet in the physical uh, seminars and all. So hope everyone be safe and thank you all for joining. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay. Isn't it time for our national anthem? Yeah. We will end the session with national anthem. Can you all rise up for the national anthem? Thank you.
Thank you and good night. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.